This vast watery wilderness of rivers, islands and marshes is still virtually untouched by man. It is the Great Okavango Swamp in southern Africa. This wetland kingdom has established its own natural balance, not least between the hunter and the hunted. Here there are many hunters and as many variations in hunting techniques. One of the more well-known is the stalking lion. Okavango's lions prey on lechwe, a species of swamp antelope rare elsewhere in Africa. As well as the large predators, there are many hunters that kill on or in the water, from the majestic fish eagle to the tiny malachite kingfisher. This is the story of both the great and the small hunters of Okavango. Okavango lies in Botswana, close to the Angolan border. The swamp covers about the same area as Wales and is fed by the Okavango River that rises in the mountains of Angola. 27,000 million litres of water flow into the swamp every day. The river rushes into Botswana but gradually loses its strength and then dies out in the Okavango swamp before it can reach the sea. Most of its water evaporates and eventually falls elsewhere as rain. But where the river gives up its life, a huge maze of reed beds, channels and shallow lagoons has been created in what was once a part of the Kalahari Desert. Great stands of papyrus flank the channels, often blocking them altogether. The thick papyrus and swamp vegetation have prevented people from developing the area. Though Okavango is primarily a wilderness of water, in between the waterways there are areas of bush country and grassland. These are home to great herds of African buffalo. The sable antelope is the emblem of the Wildlife Society of Southern Africa. Hippo feed on land at night, but rest in the swamp in the daytime, where they play a key role in maintaining the swamp's food chains. Their droppings constantly enrich the water, and this nourishes the microscopic animals and plants which are essential as food for higher forms of aquatic life. As a result, the waters are teeming with fish. The water is also clear because the dense beds of papyrus act as filters. The tigerfish is related to the piranha. It grows up to over a meter long and has a set of razor sharp teeth. These large tilapia fish, locally known as bream, have little difficulty picking off the less wary individuals in the huge shells of smaller fish. Their tactics are to hunt in packs, driving the prey against the bank before striking. In Okavango's food chain, predator can also be prey. The saddlebill stork can spear fish up to five kilograms in weight. With a wingspan of two meters, it's one of the largest fishing birds. The much smaller black herons prey on smaller fish. The herons fish in flocks of up to 40 though fishing places are vigorously guarded from each other. Black herons have a unique method of capturing prey, which no other creature has evolved. The heron holds its wings so as to form an umbrella whose canopy touches the water. These umbrellas serve two purposes. The shade they create entices fish to hide under them, in the same way that hunted fish hide under lily pads. Also, beneath the umbrella, the heron can see more clearly into the water because there is far less reflection from the surface. 
The smaller black heron steers clear of the larger birds like the egrets, which are often highly aggressive. The heron's fishing is frequently interrupted. Black herons must have evolved this unique fishing technique over many thousands of years. Their primary flight feathers have become much broader in proportion than the primaries in other herons, so that they form a light-proof canopy. The storks, the herons and the egrets have each developed their own individual fishing methods, but they all have to cope with reflection from the water. Fish predators that hunt underwater have no such problems. Okavango's Cape Clawless Otters are perfectly adapted for this. Like most carnivores, Cape Clawless Otters defend a hunting territory. One of the pair sniffs the bank to check that no rival otters have entered their stretch of water. The Okavango otters are highly inquisitive. They are not nearly so wary as other otter species around the world because they haven't been persecuted by man. Rolling helps them to dry their fur and keep it waterproof. The Cape Clawless Otter is so called because its front feet don't have claws, but they don't have webs either. As a result, they bear a remarkable resemblance to human hands. The otter is a highly specialized fish predator and has long pointed canine teeth to impale its prey. Behind them are broad molars for crushing and chewing the food thoroughly. When swimming on the surface or in shallow water, the otter uses a four-footed dog paddle making a series of dives to look for prey in between taking breaths of air. But its real speed comes from flexing the hindquarters and tail in powerful vertical strokes to drive its streamlined body through the water. The otter catches its prey in its mouth. However, the fish eagle relies exclusively on its feet and talons when it dives for prey. The fish eagle was the subject of a 20-year study by the late Leslie Brown, a world expert on birds of prey. Leslie Brown observed fish eagles right across Africa, from Nigeria to Ethiopia, but for him, their true kingdom was Okavango. Leslie Brown found the fish eagle to be the most territorial of all birds of prey. Each pair guards its fishing territory by calling to warn off other eagles in the vicinity, which respond with the same cry. In Okavango, Leslie Brown watched the eagles from an 18-meter treetop hide to get a better view of what the eagles saw from their high vantage points he discovered that he could spot fish more easily from this height because there was less reflection of sunlight from the water. Presumably, the same was true for a fish eagle. What does the swamp look like to an eagle when it makes its spectacular dives? To film this, a special aeroplane was designed and built in Germany and brought out to Okavango. This was its first trial flight in Africa. The plane was designed to land on water and carried a 16mm camera wrapped in polythene to keep it dry. Both the camera shutter and the plane were radio controlled.
The first launch didn't quite go according to plan, but at least the camera didn't end up in the lagoon. The second time, they gave the camera plane extra airspeed. This was enough to ensure a successful flight. Leslie Brown knew that an eagle's eye sees far more acutely than a human's, with the center of vision imparting much more detail. The camera lens was not designed to emulate exactly what the fish eagle would see. It would give a general impression of an eagle's eye view. The results give a fair idea of what an eagle sees as it wheels and banks over its territory in the heart of Okavango. The plane wasn't always easy to control, particularly when made to dive like a fish eagle swooping on its prey. It was a long time before the team managed to get the effect they were after. Each time the camera plane crashed in Okavango, there was always the chance of a write-off. The closest spares were over five and a half thousand kilometers from Okavango in Germany. Miraculously, neither camera nor plane had suffered much damage. The hole in the wing could easily be repaired. So another attempt was made to record the eagle's view as it hunts for prey. With its acute vision, the fish eagle can see a fish basking at the surface 400 meters away. When prey is spotted, the eagle stoops in a shallow dive. Leslie Brown calculated that despite its apparently slow descent, the fish eagle strikes with an energy equal to that of a bullet fired from a high velocity rifle. If it hit a solid object with this force, it might break its legs, so it usually snatches the fish in passing to lessen the impact. The eagle can take a fish from up to 30 centimeters below the surface. In this case, the water cushions the strike. On average, only one in six attempts is successful. Now the eagle's broad wings come into their own. They provide the strong lift necessary to get the eagle airborne before its feathers become waterlogged. The fish eagle nests in trees up to 20 meters above the swamps. Two young are usually raised, which fledge around 75 days after hatching. For the young fish eagle, life can be hard. Its parents will drive it out of their territory as soon as they nest again, and other adult eagles will attack an immature bird if it flies through their airspace. This young bird has crash-landed in a tree. It will soon learn to avoid the territories of other eagles. The resident fish eagles share their perching trees with a range of animals including monkeys, like chakma baboons. Usually, fish eagles and monkeys coexist quite happily. As well as chakma baboons, there are vervet monkeys. 
both species compete for the same food, which includes flowers, fruits, scale insects, spiders and caterpillars. A vervet challenges a young baboon and, after scaring it off, puts the fish eagles to flight. Okavango is not comprised completely of swamp. It does have drier regions and there are many hunters here. Hunting dogs thrive in the open woodlands of Okavango's large areas of savanna. The cheetah is usually thought of as a hunter of the open plains, but in Okavango it makes its living in quite thick bush country too. The cheetah's prey are young waterbuck and small antelope like impala. Sable antelope are too large for a cheetah to tackle, but they might attract a leopard. Leopards are usually reticent animals, preferring the thicker bush, though they regularly venture out into the swamps in search of lechwe. These are red lechwe, a species of swamp antelope. Their hooves are long and pointed, adapted for running over marshy ground. Elsewhere, their habitat is threatened by drainage. Okavango is one of their last strongholds. The most successful of Okavango's predators are lions. They are quite at home in the swamps and will often wade or swim across the channels between one area of savanna and another in search of game. Wherever they live, lions are not the world's most active predators. They spend as much as 85% of their lives either sleeping or resting. For the cubs, this means there's always plenty of time for play and grooming. Play, in particular, is a vital part of the development of all mammal predators. The lions of Okavango prey mainly on lechwe, sable antelope and buffalo. But in this case, it's a bush pig that has been singled out. One lioness goes to fetch her cubs, which at this stage are left behind during the hunt. At a lion kill, it's up to each individual to fend for itself. Where there's a big pride and prey is scarce, the cubs may get left out altogether, and many starve to death because their mother won't fight for them. In the long run, the life of a breeding female who can produce further litters in better times is more important. In this case, there's plenty to go round, and the lions gorge themselves. They can eat up to a quarter of their body weight in meat. Of all Okavango's hunters, the lions are the largest and most impressive. At the other end of the scale are the tiny Malachite kingfishers. They're only 12 centimeters high, but in their own way, no less impressive. The male uses the tip of his bill to hold onto the female's head feathers while the pair are mating. The malachite is superbly designed for fishing, with that large spear-like bill. The eyes are set well forward, 
which gives it excellent binocular vision to locate and seize its prey. There are pied kingfishers in Okavango too. Sometimes, like the malachite, they fish from perches, but they also fly over the lagoons to hover above the water, head held motionless as they hunt for a meal. It's the only kingfisher that regularly uses this technique. The malachite kingfisher bobs its head to help it to focus and judge distance better. As the reed sways in the wind, it tries to keep its head in a static position. This gives a clearer view of the water below. In real time, the dive, catch and return take less than two seconds. The kingfisher concentrates intently for a flash of silver below as it balances on its perch. Okavango provides the kingfisher with a ready supply of small fish. However, only about one in every five of its fishing attempts is successful, and just occasionally, a dive is hindered by water weed. The Okavango in Botswana is an enormous natural arena for both the hunter and the hunted. But there's no doubt that more people will be tempted into this marshland paradise, as water is urgently required for irrigation and industry. It will take great determination from conservationists to prevent the eventual loss of the Okavango Delta and its remarkable hunting animals. Are we ready? Couch potato. So.